Hello everyone, welcome to Modern History Lecture Series. Today in this video we will discuss about rise of charts of Bharatpur state. This is part 6 of our topic rise of autonomous states. We have already covered different states in our 5 videos like Avadh, Hyderabad, Rohilkhand, Karnatak, then Rajput, Bengal. So if you have not seen those videos, please go and watch those videos also because it will cover whole of the syllabus. See, it is always advisable that one should not leave any topic. Although there are few unimportant topic, few are very important topic, but it is not right thing to leave any topic because sometimes even unimportant or very small or very short topics, they also help in understanding big topics. Somewhere they are the base for the big important topics. So for covering whole of the syllabus, do watch all the videos. So today we will do part 6. This is part 6, Rise of Jats of Bharatpur State. First of all, we need to know that who were Jats. Jats, they basically belong to agricultural community. They were agriculturist. Peasants or farmers or zamindars, they were all Jats. And they used to live in the areas, they resided in the areas like Delhi, Agra, Mathura. So these were the region in which Jats community used to thrive. They used to live. Ye log yahan rehte the, Delhi, Agra, Mathura. As they used to live near Delhi, so they were in the neighborhood of Delhi, of the Mughal Empire. And often they were victim of the Mughal attacks. They were victim. They were victim. Victim of Mughal attacks. Why they were victim of Mughal attacks? Because they used to live near the center of Mughal Empire. So because of these attacks, they used to always struggle against the Mughal power. So in 1699, Jats of Mathura, they revolted. Mathura and nearby regions, they revolted under the leadership of Jat Zamindas. So basically, when they used to revolt, the maximum participants, they were farmers and they used to be under the leadership of Zamindas. Now, who are Zamindas? Zamindas, we know that they are the landholders of a particular area. They are landholders of particular areas and they are responsible for collecting the revenue. These farmers, because of economic reason or because of these attacks because of economic reason because of attacks or some political reasons they used to organize various revolts and during the reign of Aurangzeb, during the rule of Aurangzeb, they revolted and in these two revolts Mughal forces they tried to crush the overall rebellion. In Logone Mughals ne try kya Jats ko crush karne ka, although the revolts, the rebels, they were crushed, wo crush ho gaye, lekin they were not able to crush the Jat community. Jats were not crushed, but their overall revolt was crushed. Famous zamindars like Gokul, Rajaram, Churaman, they were all zamindars and they became the leaders of these revolt time and time again. So, first of all, Gokul. Gokul, he was Zamindar and during the revolt of 1669, when the Jats revolted in 1669, he was the leader, Gokul was the leader. So, Jats of Mathura, they revolted under the leadership of Zamindar Gokul and during this revolt, they defeated Fajdar, Fajdar of Mathura region, Abdul Nabi. He was the Fajdar, he was Shahi Fajdar and they murdered him. Now, why they murdered Fajdar of Mathura? The reason was that it was the reign of Aurangzeb. And we have already discussed about Aurangzeb that how orthodox he was. He had so many policies against the other religion. And Jats were Hindu community. And Aurangzeb was very orthodox. He gave so many policies which were against other religion. First of all, he abandoned the policy of pluralism. We have already discussed that he abandoned the policy of pluralism. Okay, then what he did that he appointed a very strong follower of Islam, Abdul Nabi. He himself was very strong follower. He himself was very orthodox as the Fajdar of Mathura who tried to curb Hindus of this area. And even the policy of Aurangzeb of destroying various temples in the region, it was the reason of the revolt of Jats in 1669. Although this revolt was crushed, but 
Jat community, they were not crushed. After Gokul came Raja Ram. When Raja Ram came, there also revolt took place during his time in 1680. And it was during the time when Aurangzeb was busy in his Deccan expedition. Jat revolted, seeing the overall condition of the empire at Delhi. And it was more organized revolt than the earlier one, which took place in 1669. And the center of this revolt was Sinsini. Sinsini, it's a village in the Bharatpur district. Comes in the Bharatpur. Comes in the region of Bharatpur district. Then in this region, Jats they plundered these area. Basically, what were the tactics they used to follow? They used to plunder all rich and poor, even Jagidas, all caste Hindu. Jews and Muslims. So in this region, Sinsini area, which is in the Bharatpur district nowadays, so Jats they plundered these areas. Raja Ram also plundered tomb of Akbar, which is in Sikandra near Agra, and Aurangzeb. Then seeing these overall revolts and condition in these states of Jat area, Aurangzeb appointed Bishan Singh Kachwaha as the Fajdar of Mathura. These names are not very important, but just for the knowledge that a Fajdar was appointed, who was able to suppress these Jats, and he was Bishan Singh Kachwaha. And after this, Raja Ram, as as this Fajdar was able to suppress Jats, Raja Ram was captured and murdered. After Raja Ram. came churaman churaman was nephew of raja ram under churaman leadership state of bharatpur was established this question can be asked it's a straight forward question that who established under whose leadership bharatpur state was established so it is under churaman and badan singh so the state was established in 1715 he also constructed strong fort at than which uh, this place is also near bharatpur in rajasthan by construct in the strong fort he challenged moguls so all these jats leader who were coming they were challenging moguls he kept revolting during the time of aurangzeb and churaman was defeated by mughal army under the leadership of subedar of agra captured him and murdered him in 1721 even these dates are not very important these years but but to know the chronology of the things happening it's important to have it in mind that what thing happened during what time after churaman came his nephew badan singh badan singh was his nephew churaman was nephew of raja ram then badan singh was nephew of Churaman, who became the leader of Jats, and he also formed various strong forts. Guarding Badan Singh, he captured Agra and Mathura, and he founded Bharatpur state. These are the main things. And when Ahmed Shah Abdali attacked, he acknowledged the rule of Badan Singh and gave him the title of Raja. So, title of Raja to Badan Singh was given by Ahmed Shah. and after badan singh an important jat leader came he was suraj mal ye bahut hi important leader rahe jat community ke and there are so many things about this efficient leader and he assumed the power in 1756 first of all he was adopted son he was adopted son okay and then he assumed the throne in 1756 and there are so many things about suraj mal that there are so many qualities of suraj mal that he was very clever he was determined he was capable and during his time the kingdom become more powerful suraj mal ke time pe jat community the jat kingdom bahut powerful ho gayi according to some historians he is also compared with the plateau He was known as the Plato of Jats community. Plato was a very famous philosopher in classical Greece, and he has enormous impact on the development of Western thought. So, see, Suraj Mal was such a statesman that he was compared with the Plato. He was known as the Plato of Jats community. This question can come as a general knowledge or general awareness question somewhere in any of the exam that who was the Plato of the Jats community. So, Suraj Mal was the Plato of the Jats community, and he ruled from 1756 to 1763. three he was a capable administrator he was intelligent statesman what was his overall area of his rule he ruled from ganga in the east to chambal in the south and agra in the west to delhi in the north so in the north delhi then to the south south chambal 
then agra in the west ganga in the east so this is north south west and east so this was his overall area of his rule there are so many things suraj mal tried to do he tried to lay down the foundation of a very strong state he adopted the mughal mughal revenue system he adopted mughal revenue system he used to dress up like farmers and he used to speak in his own language his braj dialect and according to few sources that during the third battle of panipat raja surajmal had advised maratha commander sada shiv rao bau to go for the traditional tactics of guerrilla warfare so he advised it though his advice were not accepted and uh, then he parted away from the battle he didn't participate in the battle agra mathura merat aligarh these are all presently in the state of uttar pradesh these all important districts they were in the dominion of raja surajmal then in 1763 surajmal died and after him the empire also finished so with the passing away of surajmal the overall the jat kingdom they was not able to survive for a very long time and gradually it sank into insignificance so the last important leader of the jat community was surajmal after surajmal jat kingdom was not able to thrive for a very long time these were all important things jo hame pata honi chahiye regarding the bharatpur state we have covered all important things in this video and in our next video we will discuss about and in our part 7 we will discuss about another important state thank you very much